Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the closing ceremony for Training Command's Fitness Instructor Competition 2024. We're after a long week, or after a week-long competition in 11 grueling physical events, we will crown the Fitness Instructor in Training Command. Training Command instructors are the pinnacle of MOS expertise charged with all aspects of the final stage in a Marine's journey from civilian to the Fleet Marine Force. Please rise for the invocation, march on of the colors, the playing of the national anthem, and honors to Brigadier General Sullivan, Commanding General, Training Command. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the lighthouse who illuminates our paths, the compass who guides our lives, and the anchor who sustains our souls. On the occasion of this training command, Fittest Instructor Award Ceremony, we give you thanks for this time of both celebration and recognition of excellence. I humbly ask that you bless all who have excelled and may their example serve to inspire all of us to greater devotion to honor, courage, and commitment in order that we may all fight the good fight, finish the race, and keep the faith. In these moments, gently remind us that we should be grateful for the challenge of competition because through it we grow in our understanding of not only ourselves but most importantly others we also discover that we are not powerless that perseverance and commitment have their reward and lastly we realize the importance of belonging and that teamwork support and cooperation are essential may we be encouraged that upon the fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds that upon other fields and other days will reap the fruits of victory. And now let us use this occasion, O oh God, to honor you, to honor our nation, and to honor the United States Marine Corps. For it is in your most holy and reverent name that I offer this prayer. Amen. March on the colors. The second annual Fittest Instructor Competition expanded the competitor pool with invitations to commands outside of training command and with similar missions. Wildcard competitors represent the best of both Marine Corps recruit depots and the Royal Marines. The 2024 Fittest Wildcard is Corporal Boone, Marine Corps recruit depot, Paris Island. Corporal Boone, MCRD, Paris Island, report to the Commanding General.
your call, gentlemen. Yeah. Please see. Please be seated. And now, training commands, fitness instructors for 2024. In third place, First Sergeant Wannington, McSess. In second place, Sergeant Morgan, TBS. In first place and the 2024 fittest instructor, Captain Hernandez, OCS. Attention to orders. Navy Achievement Medal presented to professional achievement in the superior performance of his duties while serving as fittest instructor Officer Candidate School Training Command, Training and Education Command from 21 April to 26 April. Captain Ray Hernandez, Initiative, Work, Ethic, Professional, Knowledge, and Superior Physical Fitness earned him the covenant title of Training Command's Fittest Instructor. Captain Hernandez stood out amongst all other instructors across 17 subordinate commands and subordinate training units due to his absolute devotion to our core values and demonstrated physical proficiency as a Marine. His diligent and focused efforts have significantly contributed to the accomplishment of Training Command's mission. Captain Hernandez, outstanding military bearing, professionalism, and dedication to duty reflect a credit on him and we're in keeping with the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. Signed, Federal J. Sullivan, Brigadier General, United States Marine Corps Training Command. Please be seated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for your fittest instructors of 2024.
Brian McGuire from uh, TECOM, who is, uh, leads the human performance branch up there. Uh, thanks for being here, Brian. Uh, this is important uh, to try to continue to grow uh, our approach to human performance and uh, the importance of an event like this. Now, for the instructors who are the competitors, um, I'm sure that this is a bittersweet moment. On one hand, uh, there's not going to be an event, a secret event around the corner that's designed to thrash you. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you're going to wind up going home here soon. And uh, this bond that you have built with your fellow competitors uh, will for now uh, be broken. Although it won't be broken for good, as I'm sure many of you will keep in touch. Uh, and this opportunity that you have had uh, to compete with some of the best combat athletes in the Marine Corps and to benefit from the experts that were, that were here to support you, that will also temporarily come to an end. Right? Uh, but I, I deeply uh, appreciate you taking the opportunity to step into the arena that was created here, because you certainly didn't have to do that. And more than that, um, just watching from a distance, I'm talking to uh, the leaders here who are running it uh, on Wednesday when we're out there. Uh, it was different this year compared to last. Because last year we had a bunch of different individual competitors. This year, you guys were a group. Uh, bonded in a way that last year's group perhaps uh, didn't. And that only improved the outcomes that we were looking for. So you'd expect that out of a group of leaders, you'd always get it. Uh, so I appreciate uh, your approach to that. Um, I'm going to read something. This is something uh, that comes from a speech that was given many years ago, not by me, by someone who's uh, actually famous and important. Um, but I'm going to read it. You guys have heard this before, many of you, I'm sure. Um, but to me, it, it kind of pays tribute to, uh, to what you all did stepping into the arena. And, and you'll recognize it. It's not the critic who counts, not the man or the one who points out how the strong man or woman stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done, done them better. The credit belongs to the man or woman who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself or herself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his or her place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. And that is from uh, President Roosevelt Theodore, so over 100 years ago. And I think that's appropriate for what you all have done stepping into this arena. Um, but as we talked about on Monday, the importance of this partly the, the individual investment that you have made in yourselves and these here have made in you. That is important. Acknowledging the fact that you had to take the step to walk into the arena. But what is most important is that you have Marines and Sailors who are going to be uh, thrust into a different arena at some point. Once they're done in the schoolhouses that you teach them. And that, that arena is going to be an arena that's characterized by combat crisis. Where they will be called upon to close with and destroy an enemy defend those who cannot defend themselves, and to help those who cannot help themselves. And for those of us who have been in an environment like that before, it is extremely unforgiving. It is full of uncertainty, and it will humble you. And invariably, the most important decisions you are making are those decisions you are making when you're near exhaustion, or your, your fatigue is extreme. So what you're doing here isn't just learning how to live your best life, and it's, it's learning how to make sure that your brains and sailors are ready when they're called to, to enter the arena. So nothing like this happens without a whole bunch of people who are passionate about uh, what they do. And so um, I will thank those now who uh, have made this happen. So uh, Kelsey Mead from Separate Fit, uh, thank you. Uh, there's other things you could be doing in a week like this. Uh, so thank you for dedicating your expertise. Uh, for Lacey and the team from SOI East, the uniformist team uh, that I was not familiar with before I took over this job, but I'm a huge believer in what you do, because you do exactly what I was just describing uh, to these instructors. Now you've invested even more uh, in these individuals. So thank you for taking the time uh, to be up here today. Uh, to the Henshaws, uh, Chris and Heidi, uh, you, you have many important places to be around the globe. And the fact that you spend at least a week here, uh, at least the last two years, and hopefully we can, can have you come back uh, in the future. Uh, your dedication uh, to the United States military is indicative of your, your patriotism. Uh, you don't just 
say, you know, we appreciate the military actually improving you do it. So thank you uh, very much for being there. To see people who are as passionate as you are for what you do uh, is really humbling. Uh, so thank you. Um, the last person I want to thank is Nick Renson. Because uh, none of this would happen without Nick Renson. None of you would have been taught. The, the winners wouldn't have been given anything because we wouldn't be here today. Right? Nick came to me over two years ago, well, about two years ago, uh, with an idea. Uh, it was not my idea, it was his idea. And, uh, and all I had to do was say yes. I'm glad I said yes. And, uh, I'm excited to see Nick where this will continue to grow you know, over the next couple of years as we move into the future. Right? With that, um, good luck at home. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the retirement of the colors, anchors away, and the singing of Marine's hymn. Post the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, this now concludes today's ceremony. Thank you all for attending.
what was different this year compared to last is last year we had a bunch of different individual competitors. This year, you guys were a group uh, and bonded in a way that last year's group perhaps uh, didn't. Right? And that only improved the outcomes that we were looking for. And so you'd expect that out of a group of leaders. You don't always get it. Uh, so I appreciate uh, your approach to that. Um, I'm going to read something. This is something uh, that comes from a speech that was given many years ago, not by me, by someone who's uh, actually famous and important. Um, but I'm going to read it. You guys have heard this before, many of you, I'm sure. Um, but to me, it, it kind of pays tribute to, uh, to what you all did stepping into the arena. And, it, and you'll recognize it uh, once I'm done. It is not the critic who counts, not the man or the one who points out how the strong man or woman stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done done them better. The credit belongs to the man or woman who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself or herself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst if he or she fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his or her place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. And that is from uh, President Roosevelt Theodore so over 100 years ago. And I think that's appropriate for what you all have done stepping into this arena. Um, but as we talked about on Monday, the importance of this um, is partly the, the individual investment that uh, you have made in yourselves and these here have made in you. And that is important and acknowledging the fact that you had to take the step to, to walk into the arena. But what is most important is that you have Marines and Sailors who are going to be uh, thrust into a different arena at some point, once they're done in the schoolhouses that you teach them. And that, that arena is going to be an arena that's characterized by combat and crisis, where they will be called upon to close with and destroy an enemy, to defend those who cannot defend themselves, and to help those who cannot help themselves. And for those of us who have been in an environment like that before, it is extremely unforgiving. It is full of uncertainty and it will humble you. And invariably, the most important decisions you are making are those decisions you are making when you're near exhaustion, where your, your fatigue is extreme. And so what you're doing here isn't just learning how to live your best life. And it's, it's, it's learning how to make sure that your Marines and sailors are ready when they're called to, to enter the arena that uh, I've just described and many of you have, uh, have experienced before. So I wish you luck in that endeavor as you move on. Um, and so nothing like this happens without a whole bunch of people who are passionate about uh, what they do. And so um, I will thank those now who uh, have made this happen. So uh, Kelsey Mead from Separate Fit, uh, thank you. Uh, there's other things you could be doing in a week like this. Uh, so thank you for dedicating your expertise. Uh, to Lacey and the team from SOI East, the human performance team uh, that I was not familiar with before I took over this job, but I'm a huge believer in what you do because you do exactly what I was just describing uh, to these instructors. But now you've invested even more uh, in these individuals. So thank you for taking the time uh, to be up here today. And, uh, to the Henshaws, uh, Chris and Heidi, uh, you, you have many important places to be around the globe. And the fact that you spend at least a week here, uh, at least the last two years, and hopefully we can, can have you come back. <laughs>